Hello, welcome back to the most dangerous podcast. How are you, James? I'm good. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. Not too bad. Have you had a good week? I've had I've I've had an okay week to be honest. I've been hard work. Yeah. What have you been What have you been up to? I've well, I've been fitting some plantation shutters. That was fun. Uh, and sitting working in my sister's shop. All right. Not enjoying the Not enjoying the weather then. Um, not enjoying the weather, no, to be honest. Um, my favourite bit of the day is when I'm in the car with the air con on. Oh, God, you miserable sod. I know. I mean, I, know. I, don't, I don't know if our, our listeners know, but we're both based in the UK. And this week, it's been the hottest week of the summer, I think. So just... I think the, it's been our summer. <laughs> I think so. So so, so the kids and all the rest of it, the uni's been off and you know, people have been enjoying their summer. And over the past six weeks, we've had... What torrential rain? I think pretty yeah, much every yeah. every day, and as soon the very day that everybody goes back, thirty degrees, and I'm absolutely sweated in the studio today. I'm absolutely sweated. I've had to take my, my trousers off. Problem is, we're miserable in Britain, aren't we? We moan that it's raining, and then it gets hot too too hot, and we moan about that as well. Oh yeah, we love the weather here. Yeah, love to moan about it. So you've got an investigation for us this week, James. So yeah, I do have a a case for you today, or a story, I suppose. Um, It's going to be about cheese. Cheese. Do you like cheese? I love cheese, yeah. I I I mean, who who doesn't like cheese? Yeah, unless you're lactose intolerant. I I am lactose intolerant, so I enjoy the cheese and my wife pays for it. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, or like hedgehogs are lactose intolerant as well. Hedgehogs are. I used to own a hedgehog and I didn't know that. When did you find out that you had a digestive system of a hedgehog? Um, I, when I was very young, um, every nappy change involved a bath or possibly a hose in the garden. Oh, God. Um, so, <laughs> yeah, it was my poor mother suffered that one. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know if you remember a few years back, there was a big campaign um, because people feed hedgehogs milk and bread in a bowl. Yes, I've heard about that. Yeah, and apparently if you do that, they explode. <laughs> Did you not hear about that? I didn't know. Uh, yeah, there's this, this hedgehogs exploded everywhere. <laughs> Similar to when you know you put a, a straw up a frog's bum. Yes, yeah, that was. Um, I think that was a pastime my dad when he was young. Was it? Well, we don't. Can, yeah, don't do that, kids. Yeah, don't be blowing up hedgehogs. Or no. frogs. Or frogs. No. Frogs are less dangerous though. You'd have to pick their spikes out your face once you've blown them up. Well, yeah, it was. It was a dangerous time. <laughs> Like mines going off everywhere, landmines. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but that's all stopped now. It is, thankfully. Yeah. Yeah, just for the record, we've never blown a hedgehog up or a frog. So everyone likes cheese, as you say. Um, what, what's your favourite cheese? My favourite cheese, that's difficult. Um, probably, I like a crumbly cheese. Lancashire, Cheshire, Wensleydale, something like that. Oh, really? Because I, I seem to remember when, back in the day... You were quite into Primula. Primula. I do uh, like Primula, but I don't yeah. think that's officially cheese. Is it not? So for people who don't know, Primula is, it's basically cheese in a tube, isn't it? Yes. Uh, for, for posh people. <laughs> Squirty cheese. <laughs> Squirty cheese. Not like the, the canister stuff, you know, that you see in America. No, this is a cheese. bit better than that. It's not bright this orange. Is, this, is, this is top quality, high-end stuff. So when Fraser was in his 20s, he used to live off Primula and uh, and Heinz Heinz products. Yes, I do. I do like my Heinz products. So for, for a short period, I did live with him and it was Primula sandwiches for lunch and a selection of um, Heinz macaroni cheese or ravioli for tea. Ravioli. I've gone off that. I don't eat that anymore. Oh, really? You don't no, eat that? I, don't eat ravioli. Ravioli. I think I've had my lifetime's fill of it, to be honest. Um, <laughs> I'm not. I'm really not. Surprised. A wee story, actually. I bought Primula about a month ago. I thought I fancy oh, yeah. some Primula. Bought a tube of it. Came home. It was lunchtime. Teddy was in bed. Everyone was out. I thought I'm, gonna stick thought, I'm, I'm treating myself today. Yeah, I'm gonna sit down. I'm going to watch it. <laughs> Your wife's going out. Put a film. On. <laughs> nice <laughs> white bread. Warburton's toasty. Toasted oh, it right. perfectly. Cup of tea. Primula spread on it. Started to eat it and I thought this tastes this tastes a bit weird. It's like gritty and tastes a bit like it's gone off. I went and got the tube. It was Primula with prawns. Oh, see, I was going to mention that if you're feeling really posh, you can buy 
primula with stuff in it, and you got prawns. prawns. That's got to be the worst. That's got to be the worst one. Oh, that's it? disgusting. I mean, yeah. fish and cheese. That's oh, that must that, that must have been disappointing. It was Ru- it ruined you, ruined your evening. Oh. You had it all planned out. Went and had a tin of Heinz mac and cheese instead. <laughs> So, anyway, so everyone likes cheese. It's clear. Even people who are lactose intolerant like cheese. So it's you know, it's a go to choice. It's true. People that actually get made ill by cheese still eat it. Well, yeah, because it's it's like a drug. Okay, so I think the best thing to do to start this in little investigation is perhaps this might be a bit boring, but you know, bear with it. We'll talk a little bit about the history of cheese. So, do you know anything about cheese production? Um, I knew a little bit about it. Um, I was told that apparently uh, cheese was a mix of stomach acids and uh, milk, and they put the acids in the milk to get the curds or something, which are like the hard bits, and then they make it into cheese. Well, I'll be honest, I didn't actually research this bit, so I'm so glad that you know a little bit because I was, I was looking through my notes before, I was thinking, oh, no, I'm asking him a question I don't know anything about. So, yeah, we'll take that for red. That's fine. That's how you make cheese. First of all, like I say, we'll just run through a little bit brief, a bit of a brief history of uh, cheese. A brief history of cheese. Okay. So archaeologists have discovered that f- cheese was first produced around about 8,000 B.C., Wow, that's a long time ago. Yeah, yeah, so 10,000 years ago. So BC is before Christ, obviously. So, you know, you're talking about 10,000 years ago. And this is around about the time when sheep and animals were first domesticated. So it kind of makes sense, you know, these farmers did sort of domesticate animals and they'd use all the produce that came from the animals. And, and yeah, and this is when cheese was first produced. Um, I mean, there's been evidence of cheese production in the Middle East, in Europe, in Central Asia from around about that time. So it's been been around for a long time. In fact, a 3,200-year-old cheese was found in the tomb of Pharaoh Thomas in Egypt. Um, he was a, a major player uh, in Memphis back in the 13th century BC. An actual piece of cheese was found in his tomb. That's right, yeah. A f- full-on real piece of cheese. <laughs> what, what did he think he needed a piece of cheese for? I mean, was it all right? Was it? Well, probably not. I wouldn't eat it. No. But yeah, it was still it was still there. Yeah, three thousand two hundred years ago. I wonder why they put it in there because he got package. <laughs> they put all sorts in there, didn't they? <laughs> yeah, they did. Like they even put people in there, though, didn't they? Like the slaves and stuff. Yes. Yeah, you can watch over him. Yeah, like, I'm all right. I'll, I'll I think stay you'll outside. be fine. <laughs> So yeah, so so originally, as I say, it's about ten thousand years old um, cheese making, and it's a bit of a mystery how it first started. Um, but we do know that uh, around about the, the times of the Romans, so what two thousand odd years ago, um, cheese making had actually become widespread. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know, people would eat and buy cheese back in the Roman times. But many of the popular cheeses that we see today, like cheddar and uh, Swiss cheese, Parmesan, uh, they've only actually been around for about 500 years. So as we know, uh, we've got farmers and shops today that specialize in cheese. uh, And the people who produce that cheese are called cheesemongers. Cheesemonger. A cheesemonger, yeah. So if you think about through history, it's different types of mongers. You've got iron mongers, the the guys who'd make weapons for the armies and uh, you know, armor and all the rest of it. And then you've got fishmonger who'd uh, sail out to sea, collect all the fish and feed it to the, to the, to the villagers and all the rest of it. So it's a very, like very highly regarded. I would have, would have thought if you choose monger, fishmonger, I am monger. Do you think of any other mongers? <coughs> <laughs> Think of a few, yeah. Can you, can you... <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to know what the actual, you know, definition of a monger is. Well, you know, 
uh, just someone. I think it means somebody who's highly skilled in something. Yeah, I mean, it's something they obviously let go because you know you don't like nowadays. You don't get like a, a music monger or yeah, we get hate mongers. Hate mongers, yeah, that's a new one. Highly yeah. skilled in hating things. A hate monger. Yeah, that's probably the only new one. So I can see Fraser's getting pretty hungry there. He's already got his uh, his crackers out, ready for his cheese board. I'm sure his wife will bring that in for him shortly. Is that a nightly thing, Fraser? Is that what? A nightly thing. You get your, your smorgasbord brought to you. He does, yeah. Um, usually two or three cheeses from around the world, or some crackers and a couple of McVitie's digestives. You're a lucky, lucky man. I know, I know. Did you ever see, ever watch that film, um, the, the, the Wallace and Gromit one? That was, that was a, there was a lot of cheese in that. I'll be honest, I've never actually watched a Wallace and Gromit film. I've been on the ride at Blackpool. Uh, yeah, I have as well, actually, yeah. It's, it's like yeah. a ghost train, isn't it? It's quite good. It's quite good. So, Big so, scary rabbit at the end. The, yeah, that's right. You know, that's the rabbit that's from, from the film. Oh, right. Oh. Yeah, so it's like, it's a, I do recommend it. I mean, it's from like 2005. Yeah. So me and my friend went, right, I was about 22 or 23, we both were, um, and we hit the pub early. As you do on a Saturday, and uh, we we had a few. Obviously, this is a, this is a kid film, mm-hmm. um, and we decided actually, yeah, that sounds pretty good. We'll, we'll go and watch that. We like we like it. And he's running around, crackers about cheese and all the rest of it, and um, <laughs> it's good. You just want to see it. So yeah, so we were a bit tanked up, and we went there on a Saturday afternoon. But uh, my mate, he, I mean, you know him, and he's got a very hearty laugh. Oh right, yeah, yeah. yeah you know, it's mean. one of those like, <laughs> <laughs> type type thing. So we're sat there in the cinema about half past four in, on a Saturday afternoon, surrounded by children, and every single joke that was cracked, he's there going, <laughs> <laughs> "Crackers about cheese, that's brilliant, <laughs> so funny." Yeah, it, it was. Just, it was. So we got kicked out. Did you actually we get got, kicked out? We got kicked out by the city, yeah, because all these children were trying to watch this film, and there's us, these 22, 23 year old lads. We were, we were actually having a good time. We, we, yeah. It wasn't any problem. We were just being a bit loud. It wasn't like shouting for Wendelin to get her tits out or anything. <laughs> no, no, it was no. nothing like that. We were, you know, we're nice guys. We weren't doing anything, anything like that. We were just all being friendly. But yeah, I don't think the kids enjoyed yeah. it. Yeah. Bad idea. I don't think we were allowed back after that to, this, to that particular cinema. Punished for enjoying yourself. That's it. You, know, you, can't, you can't can't catch a break these days, can you? I know. Okay, Fraser. Would you believe me if I told you that cheese can be extremely dangerous? A dangerous cheese. Um, right. I, I'm going to have to believe you because this is the most dangerous podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> have you ever, ever heard of a type of cheese called Kasumatsu? I have not, actually, no. Well, it's actually in the Guinness World Book of Records, uh, and it's considered to be the world's most dangerous cheese. Um, that, it, sorry. that That's its record, is that it's the world's most dangerous cheese. Well, actually, that's a good point, because I didn't look at that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's in the world record for, Guinness World Record for, so, for some reason. Um, right. Yeah, it's because it's considered to be the world's most dangerous cheese, is what I've got in my notes here, but I don't know what the record is. <laughs> it's it's actually a Sardinian delicacy. Uh, it's made from sheep's milk, um, like we discussed before. Um, right. Okay. Um, the only difference between this cheese and the average cheese that you buy in your uh, supermarket is it contains fly larvae. Larvae. Fly larvae. Yeah, or maggots, I suppose, if you want of a better word. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send you a, a, a picture. Okay. A photo, and if you have a quick look at it, and then you can describe to the listeners what, what you're seeing. Oh my God, that's disgusting. Um, right, as this is a podcast, I'll describe it. Uh, what I'm looking at is a standard wheel of cheese, so a big dinner plate size block of cheese. Um, but instead of being solid in the middle, it is all sunken and rotten looking. Yeah, it's disgusting. It's like ready break, isn't it? It's just a mush. Yeah. In, 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 like, a, in like a cheesy bowl. It's horrible. It- it's like someone's eaten the middle out of it and vomited it back in. Yeah, it literally <laughs> is. Yeah, that's what it looks like. It's horrible. Anybody who's listening, if you know, do you know what? Don't bother because it's so horrible. It just put you off your dinner. But if you do like horrible things, have a look online. You can find it. Uh, it it's minging, basically. It's horrible. 
So please tell me more about this cheese, James. Yeah, I will do. So like I say, it's, 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 there's maggots in it, basically. Um, it's so dangerous that Italy banned it in 1962. Like I said, it comes from Sardinia. Um, so Sardinia is in Italy, as you know. Um, and since 1962, this Italian government have banned it. Uh, it's been made illegal. Um, it's also illegal in mainland Europe, all of Europe, uh, and the USA as well. Bloody hell, an illegal cheese. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, th- I think it's illegal because it's got maggots in it and you can't really sell things that have got maggots in it, I suppose. Yeah, so is it more it's illegal to sell as opposed to, to make and, and eat? And Yeah, it's a difficult question, I suppose, because, I mean, who's going to stop you making it? Well, if you yeah. want to eat your own maggoty cheese, I'm sure that's your prerogative. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. I mean, um, you just make it. Uh, you can get it on the black market, I imagine. If you know someone who makes it, then you can just kind of. So, is this a, a serious crime, or are we talking about you know just a slap on the wrist for making this cheese? Like I say, I think it's probably more of a, I don't know, this a slap on the wrist, and then all your sheep get murdered. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, not probably not. A, I don't know. Well, I mean, if you're a sheep farmer, that's probably you know it's tra- it's tragic, isn't it? But uh, if you're a sheep farmer, that would be a massive inconvenience. Uh, uh, more of an inconvenience. I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> to, put, to put it lightly. <laughs> yeah, be pretty difficult carrying on after. <laughs> that's your job, like that's your livelihood, God. Yeah. So yeah, so I was like, the risk is there. Just don't make this cheese if you're a sheep farmer because, yeah, that yeah. happens. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, uh, people still eat it and you can still get it. But like I say, if you can't get it in the shops. You need to know someone who does it, who makes right. it. Yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, it's illegal to buy. Probably illegal to make. But, you know, who's who's checking on cheese these days? The world, <laughs> you know, bigger fish to fry. So it's quite expensive to buy, actually. Um, it costs around about £100, which might be euros, per pound. Wow. So, yeah, that's pretty pricey, isn't it? But I suppose that's because of the risk. So most stuff that's rotten and has maggots in it gets thrown away, but this cheese that's rotten and has maggots in it is actually worth plenty of money. Yeah, yeah, a bit of a money spinner. Yeah. Put put some cheese in the cupboard, let it rot, sell it for <laughs> £100 per pound. Uh, in terms of making it, um, it takes about three months, all in all, apparently. Um, you basically get some sheep's milk, heat it up, and then leave it, leave it to curdle. Uh, and then when it's a solid mass, uh, you remove like a, a section of it. Uh, and then you just allow these flies, these cheese flies, uh, to, to sort of infiltrate the cheese and lay their eggs. So is that um, a particular type of fly? It, yeah, it is. I'm not going to say the name. You'll have to look it up. <laughs> I, I don't do names very well. As, uh, I, as you I know. assume it's a local Sardinian fly that you know. Yeah, well, I guess that you just put it in. I wonder if it's like maybe like a special room that's just got loads mm-hmm. of these this type of fly in it. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know, or whether they just leave it out on like outside on the shelf, and this type of fly just likes that cheese. I'm not too sure about that. Um, but yeah, it's just a little tiny little black cheese fly, and it flies in and gets in the cheese and lays its eggs. Uh, or larvae, and um, basically, they just lay just loads of them. They burrow into the cheese and just lay hundreds and hundreds of eggs, and then the 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 maggots sort of hatch out, and they just eat the cheese slowly, you know, sort of fester in it, um, and I suppose it's like the enzymes from the sort of maggots gut and saliva and all the rest of it. It just basically ch- just churns the cheese. Like, you know, churns, not turns, churns. <laughs> so, so like you say, you just end up with like a bowl of like this mush, ready break kind of thing. Sounds like maggot shit. It, yeah, yeah, well, yeah, I guess it kind of is. Like, really, it's just it's absolutely disgusting. Like, I mean, uh, I don't know. Would, would you eat it? Would I eat it? Ab- absolutely not. To be honest, no. no. Would you eat it if, if it came in a tube of primula? Maybe, yeah, maybe. Would that be the the new primula? Yeah, I don't know how popular that would be, but uh, yeah, we could maybe write a letter to them. Yeah, if it was in a tube of primula, I mean, I'd probably give it a go. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> New primula, Kasu Marzu. <laughs> but it makes you wonder that, you know, I mean, Sardinia is not 
you know, particularly a third world country. Um, and there's like enough food out there without them having to eat maggoty cheese. Yeah, well, it, it, it's a part of Italy, isn't it, Sardinia? It's not a... Yes, yeah. Yeah, yeah sorry. Um, yeah. I, I, it's, just, it's just some of these things. Um, you know, I watched a TV program with a guy eating a fish that had been fermented for like 30 years, and it was basically just a rotten piece of fish. Yeah, um, people eat mad, had, mad stuff. And he was vomiting and stuff like that. And you're like, you know, there's just have a cod. You know, yeah. there's plenty of like normal fish out there. Do we need to? Do we need to eat cheese full of maggots? It's a bit mad, isn't it? It's just like why just have a slice of cheddar, or you know, why do you have to go down this route? It is... <laughs> right. But then there's part of me that goes, if these people are actually willing to eat this maggoty cheese, then maybe it actually tastes amazing. Maybe it's worth it. it does it, or is it just kind of a prestige thing? You know, maybe. is it just kind of like oh. I'll, I'll... You could just say, "Oh, yeah, well, you know, it's it's a it's a luxury item." Yeah, like one of those stories where like no one actually likes caviar, but people eat it because it's expensive. yeah. Have you ever tried caviar? Once. It's grim, isn't it? Uh, yeah, um, I didn't know it was caviar when I was eating it, though. It's just little balls of seawater, basically, <clears throat> and they charge yeah. an arm and leg for it, and I don't get it. Yeah, I watched how they get caviar, and it's bit grim they actually just cut the fish open while it's still alive yeah sque- squeeze the eggs out the belly i've seen that yeah. as well yeah um not probably not really necessary so the way that you eat it so you eat it on flatbread okay and you basically just dip it into the, the top so that most of the maggots are really down sort of near the bottom so if oh. you want a maggoty feast you sort of get get yourself in there if you just want a little bit of a taste you sort of just go around the edges you're supposed to have it with red wine Strong flavored red wine, um, and apparently it tastes like it. it's a really strong flavor, like a Stilton or a Gorgonzola. No. Yeah, and apparently you can still taste it afterwards for about for hours. On, <laughs> in your, yeah, for hours in, in your mouth. I don't know. This doesn't sound nice, though, does it? A cheese that you're lying in bed burping back up. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't even know if you yeah, flies <laughs> flying out your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> But then there's other people who don't want, like you mentioned before, there's other people who don't actually want to eat the maggots. So what they do, all right, is they they put the cheese, so you get a slice of cheese, you put it in a sealed paper bag, mm-hmm. and that starves the maggots of oxygen. All right? and, and then what you actually hear, apparently, I don't know, I've, I've, not seen it, I've not seen anything about this, but I've just read it. So, you know, it must be, it was on the internet, so it must be true. You, you get like a little pitter patter sound as the maggots die and fall off the cheese into the paper bag. That's and, disgusting. Yeah. And then when, when it stops, so it's a bit like popcorn when it stops, you know, they're all dead and the cheese is good. So you go for it and you get stuck in. But it just, it, it doesn't sound worth it. It really doesn't, you know, I know that's it. It doesn't, does it? It's just cheese and it tastes a bit like, what did I say? Stilton. Yeah, just, just have, have some Stilton. Exactly, just have some of that. Why go through mm. all this hassle just to have a bit of cheese? Again, it's you know, it's the FOMO thing, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, you, you hear people that they go to these like exotic restaurants, and Noah had crocodile and ostrich. What they taste like? Oh, they tasted a bit like chicken. We just go fucking Nando's. Oh, chicken then. <laughs> <laughs> the point. <laughs> you want it to taste like crocodile? Oh, it tastes a bit like chicken. <laughs> a waste of time. That's it, exactly. Just have a normal piece of cheese, you weirdo. Yeah. I wouldn't really eat maggoty cheese if I could eat Stilton. It tastes the same. Yeah. So would you not eat it because it's maggoty or because it's dangerous? Um, well, I don't know. You've still to tell me exactly why it's dangerous because maggots sound disgusting, but are maggots dangerous? So the actual, the, the real risk, really, I suppose the major risk, well, the only risk, <laughs> as far as I can <laughs> is that while, when eating the maggots, your stomach acid doesn't actually kill all of them uh, and they survive. And this can potentially lead to a condition called myiasis. Myiasis. That's right. Yeah. Myiasis. And this is absolutely grim. This, this condition so it's uh, basically it's a parasitic infestation of the body uh, where live animal fly larvae maggots again 
uh, grow <laughs> inside the host while feeding on uh, its tish- on the tissue of the host. That's rank. It really is. So there's certain flies um, that can actually uh, sort of burrow into you and lay their eggs. Um, there's a fly called. Have you ever heard of a bot fly? Yes, I have. Yeah, yeah. I, I watch satisfying videos of them pulling bot fly larvae oh. out of like squirrels and stuff. Oh my god! Yeah. So yeah, there's hope. Uh, Bot flies do it. Um, there was a couple of other screw fly, I think, is another one. Yeah, right. uh, so basically, they they break into the, um, the host skin and, and uh, deposit their maggots, <laughs> their larvae into into the into the host. I mean, mostly it's animals they do it to, but you know, yeah. it has been known to, to happen to humans. Um, most flies or flies that do this, that they'll attack sort of open wounds. So um, you know, if there's a, a gash or whatever. Yeah, um, that they'll sort of land on that and lay, and and then obviously the the maggots will hatch or the the larvae will hatch and and, and eat the, the 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 dead flesh off the animal. Oh dear, the last thing you want is a fly landing in your gash. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, come on now, come on, behave yourself. <laughs> So the, th- the theory is that if you were to eat this cheese, Katsumatsu, Katsumatsu um, the di- your digestive system doesn't actually kill all of the maggots and then they f- sort of feed into your gut, oh. sort of wriggle down, and that, uh, they basically just sort of nest there and you get this, this condition, this myiasis inside of you. Um, now, I did actually look up this, this um, online. And yeah. I, I don't do it. Just don't. It's, my life's been changed. It's horrific. <laughs> it's so grim. I mean, well, if you're watching YouTube videos of squirrels getting eaten alive, then by all yeah. means. But uh, yeah, so I, I wouldn't suggest it. So yeah, I mean, that's that's the risk. But I mean, I'll be honest with you, though. Um, again, do you know how many people have caught my ISIS through eating this cheese? Um, well, they've made it illegal, so it must be quite a few. Um, I Three thousand. Uh, yeah, good guess. Well, since nineteen fifty-two, since this uh, records have been sort of started, been recorded, uh, nobody has caught my ISIS through eating this cheese. So again, it's another dud. Nobody, nobody. This cheese isn't dangerous at all. <laughs> <laughs> I thought this would be the real deal. It's not going very well, this is it? No, because. Um... I think what thirty seconds into Everest, we already realised it wasn't the most dangerous. <laughs> we and, we uh, need we 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 need a winner. Yeah, we found a cheese so dangerous it's killed no one. Nobody. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Like I said, doesn't mean it's not dangerous. Yeah, but that's not to say cheese isn't dangerous though. No. Yeah, there, there, there have been various cheese-related deaths throughout time. I mean, even as recently as March this year, there's been a a reported death from cheese. Um. Have you ever heard of a an illness or an infection called listeria? It's listeria. I'm sure we had listeria growing up at the back of the house in my parents' house, little purple and white flowers. From what I've read, this is something completely different. So basically, it's it's a, a mild. You get mild flu-like symptoms, chills, muscle aches, diarrhea, and all the rest of it. Uh, stiff headache, confusion, um, smashing. Yeah, and the thing is, it can sit in your system for up to about two months. Um, after you've eaten something with listeria. Um, and the thing is, soft cheese um, can have listeria in it. So pregnant women, for example, are told not to eat soft cheese. Uh, right, see, now I remember that and I never knew why. Yeah, it's because of that, because of this listeria thing. So if, if it becomes very serious, it becomes a very serious infection. And even as, as recently as March this year, a British man actually died from catching this infection through eating cheese. So cheese does kill people. So this listeria, this is just knocking about in soft cheese that we're buying. Like, I mean, we talking, you know, like Philadelphia, that sort of soft cheese or cheese that's been out in the sun. I, I think it's more um, soft cheese that's that proper soft cheese, like Philadelphia. What's that? <laughs> you know, that's that you. The, that's just a, a level down from Primula, isn't it? I, I think we're talking proper ch- soft cheese that's made, you know, like the French stuff. You know, yeah, so like Philadelphia is just a rich man's Primula, isn't it, really? Yeah, well, no, it's a poor man's Primula, in my opinion. Poor man's Primula, well, yeah, yeah, that's what I would say. <laughs> um, so you're talking proper, like, cheese shop, deli counter, soft cheeses. 
Yeah, yeah, stuff like that. You know, the the, the top tier, top shelf stuff. Do you know when I used to um, go to school, I had to get a bus into Chester City Centre and then another bus home from there because I went yeah. to a stupid school the other side of the city. I remember. And my mum worked in a hairdresser's and across the road was the cheese shop. And I used to go in there and get a small slice of cheese instead of going and getting sweets. Really? And, uh, yeah. That's I was so just sad. my good wife about that a couple of weeks ago and she was laughing at me. Yeah, I mean, that's it's laughable. What mm. did... Just, just go in like that Oliver Twist. Please, yeah. sir. <laughs> Can I have some cheese? But the wee lady knew me. She was like, oh, Fraser, come and try this cheese that we've got in. <laughs> and I was like, that's really good. Can I have like a couple hundred grams of that? And I'd just walk about chest and eating my lump of cheese. Oh, no. Do you remember we went to that disco? And there was disco. that guy there. And like, he had those, he had Jesus sandals on. Was it a disco for people with difficulties? Uh, it was with the church. I'm, we we got roped into helping the church. By oh yeah, I remember the one. Yeah, and then there was, they put a disco on. I don't think it was. No, it wasn't I gave that. you the Oasis tickets that night. That's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then they had this DJ on, and he had sandals on, Nike Nazareth, Nazareths, <laughs> you know, Jesus sandals, <laughs> and he and he just had a block of cheese, and he was just picking bits off throughout the Maybe night. Maybe he was Jesus. Che- hey. <laughs> Come on, this is my this is my podcast, not yours. I'm the one telling jokes here. <laughs> but there is another guy. Um, I think this was back in uh, my. This is this is in August, I think. So a month ago. Okay. So he's called. Where is it now? Oh, another Italian name. I'm not good with Italian names. Uh, guy Guy Como. Shaya. Parani. Giacomo Chaparini. That's the one. Thank you. <laughs> Chaparini. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. So, so this 74 year old guy, he's a dairy and cheese farmer owner, okay, from uh, Lombardy in northern Italy. Oh, Romano di Lombardi. There you go. You can do it too. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and he was crushed to death in his own factory. We can get this. 25,000 wheels of cheese fell on him. Wow. I know. Someone counted them. Well, I guess so. I mean, I just read the newspaper reports. Yeah. I, get, I suppose they would have had to, forensics. Yeah. I mean, how many wheels of cheese? If it had only been 24,500, it might have been fine. Yeah, I don't think it's exact. I mean, it'd be pretty 25,000 exactly. Is you know I don't think it's I don't think it's precise but roughly should we say around about around about twenty five thousand wheels of cheese mental so, yeah and according to reports one of the shells holding the cheese broke and it cre- just created a domino effect and all the uh, uh-huh. the cheese came tumbling down and apparently according to, to local media um, emergency services worked all night to try and rescue him. I know they were there with a big tub of butter and crackers. Yeah, yeah. Like <laughs> we best hurry up. <laughs> we must have found him. Um, apparently, yeah, it took 12 hours apparently to find him. Bloody hell. Yeah, so that's probably because they were eating the cheese. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm just whizzing through these because when I found out that our cheese didn't kill anyone, I just thought, how am I going to fill this out? So this is a good one, though. You'll enjoy this. Oh. So in Pennsylvania, Christopher Pagano, right? That's his name. I think that's how you yeah, say it. Go with that. He will go with that. Yeah. So he um, repeatedly, well, he's a bit of a, a sex pest, um, and he was done for indecent exposure and harassment of women. And he earned himself the dubious nickname of the Swiss cheese pervert. Swiss cheese, the cheese with big holes in it, yeah? That's right, that's right, yeah. <laughs> so he got an eight-year eight, eight sentence for this particular crime that he did. You know, he'd done others. I think it was just a collective thing. Um, yeah, and he got eight years. And what he used to do is he, he would expose himself to women um, and rub himself with uh, Swiss cheese. So, yeah. Right. Think, so... Think about that. <laughs> I th- yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a bit weird, man. That's that's some mental mental health issues there. I think. Yeah, I mean the notes say exposing himself to women and offering to pay them. 
to observe his rubbing Swiss cheese on his private parts. That's right, yeah. yeah, so. yeah. <laughs> Thanks for the offer. I'll take a miss today. I mean, he must have... At some stage, he's been sitting at home thinking, I'd love to get someone to watch me rubbing cheese on my knob. Yeah. What's the best way I can get a girlfriend? Yeah. Can I offer you some money to get you to watch me rubbing cheese on my knob? No, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks for the offer. I'll take a miss today. Do you know the sad thing is there's probably a woman out there for him? I don't think there is. No, <laughs> no I, I'll, uh, I'll put my hands up here, put my, uh, my cards on the table and say, no, I think... You don't I, think so, I, no. I, I don't think so. So, yeah, and just just finally, I suppose, we'll wrap this up soon. Um, it's my personal favourite, actually, um, is when former EastEnders babe, Martine McCutcheon, that's what it says here, I don't know why I wrote that, uh, she, well, she, she was killed by a block of cheese in the ITV hit show Midsummer's Murders. Now, I know that's fictional, but nevertheless, they got their idea from somewhere. So I'm just saying. Oh, where there's smoke, there's fire, isn't there? Absolutely. There's, there's cheese murders everywhere. So someone like. leathered Tiffany with a block of cheese. Exactly, yeah. Mm. I, d- I don't think I saw the episode, but I have been trawling through the ITV player to try and find it. I... <laughs> someone opens your computer, <laughs> goes onto Google. Marty McCutcheon leathered by cheese. <laughs> I know. Oh God! Please, I hope the police don't find it. So anyway, so yeah, so there, you know, there's just a couple that I found. Um, so, have you heard of the famous cheese rolling competition? I actually have. It's it's a wonderful event. I've seen it on the TV. Yeah. Oh, have you? Did they televise it? Do they really? It sometimes it's on the news. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well. <laughs> anyway, so it's called Cooper Hill Cheese Rolling and Wake. That's the official and name. Wake. That's yeah. the wakes for afterwards for all the people that died doing it, I think. Yeah, that's what I've got here as well, but I don't think it is. But um <laughs> it, yeah, they set up a set up a wake for the people that, that crash and burn on the way down to the hill. On the way down the hill. So I I've actually got again another I don't want to get bogged down in the photos too much, but I do have another one which show, which highlights that this this particular hill and it shows you how how steep it is you know and this is no sort of mean feat so i'll send you this over and then you can just tell me what you think of it okay jesus that's like um <clears throat> that's like the chicken run well that's what i thought as well but 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 twice the size that's i mean what i'm looking at is a grassy cliff really it's huge yeah yeah, yeah. so Mental. you know it's, it's an annual event um, who lives in the hold... house at the bottom I don't know. It's got like massive holes in the <laughs> in, in the side of it where the cheese is just flown into it. So yeah, so like I say, it's an annual event. It's uh, mm-hmm. spring spring bank holiday, and it's held at this uh, Cooper's Hill. It's Gloucester in England. So basically, participants race down this two hundred yard hill. It's a long chase, and what happens is the I don't know the, the people who run the race. They roll down this wheel of cheese. It's double Gloucester. If, if you're interested. Um, so yeah so they roll this cheese down uh, all the competitors race down the hill and the, the aim is basically to catch the cheese can I ask do you know if anyone's ever caught the cheese no they haven't caught the cheese as oh. far as I'm aware <laughs> no no but whoever finishes at the bottom quickest wins the cheese right so that's the prize okay. so, cheese and six metal pins in your legs yeah well there's been loads of injuries Loads of people have they've been broken ankles, concussion, broken legs, uh, seizures. Even, uh, even this year's winner, in fact, uh, well, the, of the women's event because there's various different events. You get men's, women's, right. you know, uh, children. So yeah, so the women's event uh, this year. So Delaney Irving won this, um, and I, I, I think she's quite good at it. I think she's won it quite a few times. Oh right, yeah. Um, I, I think. It might have been somebody else, but I'm pretty sure it's her. Um, so she made it to the bottom of the hill the fastest this year. Uh, but on the way down, she knocked herself out. But so she just rolled the last bit unconscious. Yeah, she just face planted over the finish line. She, yeah, so she got there, but she didn't even know about it. And this is an actual quote. So I remember running, then bumping my head, and then I woke up in the tent. I still don't really believe it. It feels great. <laughs> <laughs> 
there are YouTube clips if you want if you're interested, go and have a look because it's insane. It's it's bonkers. We'll stick a couple on the Facebook page. Yeah, it's just absolutely crazy. Who in their right mind would do this? Would it be cheating to get inside a giant tractor tire? Yeah, I think it has to be on foot. <laughs> but I don't know why you do it for and for what for a bit of cheese. It's this whole this whole sort of podcast seems to revert back to why are you doing this for a bit of cheese? You can get cheese in Tesco. (laughs) Okay, then. So conclusions. So I I do think we've digressed a little bit this week. (laughs) There were so it was interesting researching, to be honest, but there wasn't that much to go on. There is this one cheese, which is called the most dangerous cheese. And then as I delve deeper into it, it turns out that no one's actually died. So is it the world's most dangerous cheese? Well, I think it, I think it can be, um, <clears throat> because I think that, you know, death doesn't, you know, death's not important for it to be dangerous, is it? Um, I, I suppose, you know, um, I had to think when I knew you were doing cheese, I had a little think about it. And I thought, is the world's most dangerous cheese actually something like mozzarella? Because so many people around the world eat pizzas and get fat and get heart disease. Yeah, well, this is the thing. Exactly. So this is considered the most dangerous cheese because it's got potential to be dangerous. You know, we've all got potential to be dangerous, I guess. But then, as we mentioned before, There's other types of cheeses, like the soft cheeses, that do actually kill people, you know, through bacteria that lives within them. But I I think that um, where obviously you can get listeria in soft cheese, you can get that in lots of other food. That's more of like a just a general food poisoning. This cheese has live maggots in it that can live in you. Um, And when I said about the mozzarella, what I actually thought about mozzarella is I thought, yeah, well, Something like mozzarella or cheddar, so many people eat it and get fat and get heart disease, but that's not the cheese's fault. That's them eating too much of it. Whereas you can have just one teaspoon of this cheese and end up with maggots living in you. Um, which I think, you know, I, I, I can't I can't honestly find another cheese that I genuinely think is more dangerous. But, but I mean, there's even cheeses that cause more injury and more damage you know, through just being there, through activity, you know, like cheese rolling or that dude where all the cheese fell on him, that cheese has caused more damage to anybody than this this uh, katsu matsu ever has. So I, I don't know. I mean, I know it's my case and I'd love it to be a thumbs up, but I'm not sure myself. But take, take the cheese rolling and take the cheese that fell on the man Um they both involved other factors. The the cheese doesn't roll itself down the hill. Humans decide to do that. Um, the man that got killed with the twenty five thousand um, wheels of double gloss. It wasn't double Gloucester, was it? No, that's uh, the one. No, that, that, down the hill. That, yeah, that's the wrong the guy that got killed at twenty five thousand wheels of cheese. That was because of a crap shelf. It wasn't the cheese's fault. Cheese didn't leap off the shelf and kill him. This mm-hmm. stuff's got maggots in it. This yeah, cheese is rank dangerous it's weird how i'm arguing for your thing and you're arguing against it but... yeah I, I just don't think i just don't think it is i think there's much more sort of dangerous cheeses out there to be honest well i think we should um put out to our listeners i think we should um message in if you've got any cheeses that you think are more dangerous then send us send us a message do you think well okay that's fair enough but i do think we should come to some sort of conclusion between us i think well, i be... think it is the most dangerous cheese in the world i'm gonna yes I'm going to have to say no. Oh, that's a draw on that one. So it's a draw, even though it was, it was mine. Oh, no. <laughs> so one day we'll get a, a double yes, I think. We'll sort of get a double yes, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's only episode two. We, I know, we might, yeah. You know, we've got, we've got a double no and a draw. So I'll go with that. We'll keep it going, shall we? Yeah, I think we'll keep it going. I think my game next week's going to be quite cool. Yeah. I've got All some right. good thoughts on that one do that so i I mean generally speaking i mean there's like like we've said numerous times throughout the uh the 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 podcast cheese is 
still seem more dangerous. It, it does seem quite dangerous. I mean, everyone loves cheese. You know, everyone loves cheese. Yeah, yeah. But you know, is it a silent killer that walks throughout our society? I'd like to know if anyone knows if anyone's actually been killed over cheese or eating too much. Can you can you die? I, I did look into this. You can't die by eating too much cheese. No, would you just be sick? Yeah. No, I mean, has someone actually been murdered over cheese, stabbed to death over yeah. a block of cheese? Well, in fact, that's my fucking cheese. Uh, yeah, you know that people used to get executed back in the day for stealing cheese. You know, eighteen hundreds and all the rest of it. Yeah, but they executed people for all sorts back then, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. And Marty yeah. McCutcheon, she got killed by cheese. Yeah, she was killed by cheese. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, I don't want to talk about her too much. <laughs> <laughs> right. So, uh, I think that's it. Should we call it a day? I think we'll wrap it up. We'll um, say it's a draw. It's been, yeah, we'll say it's a draw. It's been an absolute pleasure again. Yeah, never and a we'll be Back next week with games. Games next week. Look forward to it. Speak All soon, right. James. Take care. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.